Hello everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Virtual Lab series of video blog presentations on various diverse scientific computing topics. As you can see here, the title of today's presentation is on the role of density functional theory and molecular dynamics computational techniques in predicting the thermal properties of materials. This presentation is provided by Virtual Lab, the company behind the development of the Materials Square online platform. Materials Square is entirely dedicated to assisting and encouraging researchers from across the world to perform atomistic computational simulations on a wide range of materials science and molecular chemical modeling applications, directly via our integrated powerful cloud computing resources. Being entirely online based, and executable via any basic web browser interface on any device with internet access, the Materials Square platform makes it possible to execute such complex simulations and calculations without the need to install any complicated scientific code locally on your machine, and without the need to have expensive supercomputing clusters at your immediate disposal. Our supported atomistic simulation functionalities and solutions are mainly based on well-established scientific computational techniques such as density functional theory and classical molecular dynamics, and have a very broad range of useful applications in computational chemistry and materials science R&D, which are thus ideally suited for both industrial and academic users from around the globe. We invite our viewers to please consult our products and services offered via the Materials Square platform by visiting its corresponding website, which is www.matsku.com, as noted also in the video description below. So, let us begin our main scientific presentation of today. The thermal properties of materials are among the key physical properties that are widely studied in materials science. The main thermal properties of materials include 1. Thermal conductivity, K. This is the property of a material to conduct heat. It is usually denoted by the symbol K and is measured in units of watts per meter Kelvin, WMK. Different materials have different thermal conductivities. For instance, metals typically have high thermal conductivities, meaning they are good conductors of heat, while insulators like wood or rubber have low thermal conductivities. 2. Specific heat capacity, See this is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of a certain amount of the material by a certain temperature interval, usually 1 degree Celsius or 1 Kelvin. It is usually denoted by the symbol C and is measured in units of joules per kilogram per Kelvin, J kilogram K. This property is dependent on the material's structure and its state, solid, liquid, gas. 3. Thermal diffusivity. Alpha this is the rate at which a material can transfer or distribute heat within itself. It is calculated by dividing the thermal conductivity of the material by the product of its density and specific heat capacity, alpha equals Kc. It is typically measured in square meters per second, m caret 2s. 4. Thermal expansion, beta when materials are heated, they tend to expand, this is known as thermal expansion. The rate of expansion is quantified by the material's coefficient of thermal expansion, usually denoted by the Greek letter beta or alpha, not to be confused with thermal diffusivity. It's typically measured in units of per degree Celsius or per Kelvin, 1 degree C or 1 K. Materials with high thermal expansion coefficients expand more for a given increase in temperature than those with low coefficients. 5. Thermal resistivity are this is the reciprocal of thermal conductivity and it measures a material's resistance to heat flow. It is typically measured in meter Kelvin per watt, mkw. 6. Melting point and boiling point. These are the temperatures at which a material changes state from solid to liquid, melting point, and from liquid to gas, boiling point. These points can tell us a lot about the thermal stability of a material. These properties are crucial in determining how a material will behave in various environments, especially those where temperature changes are common. They play a significant role in fields such as construction, aeronautics, electronics, and many others. Let's now discuss more in detail how DFT computational techniques can be employed to compute certain thermal properties of materials. Density Functional Theory DFD is a quantum mechanical method used in physics and chemistry to investigate the electronic structure, principally the ground state, of many body systems, particularly atoms, molecules, and the condensed phases. 
Although DFT is primarily used to understand electronic properties, it can be utilized to compute thermal properties of materials. Here is a brief overview of how it is done. 1. Phonon calculations. Phonons are quantized modes of vibration occurring in a rigid crystal lattice, like the atomic lattice of a solid. The properties of these phonons are directly related to the thermal properties of the material. DFT can be used to perform phonon calculations, from which one can derive a range of thermal properties. Phonon density of states obtained from DFT calculations can give access to the vibrational contribution to the heat capacity, entropy, and free energy. 2. Thermal conductivity. The thermal conductivity of a material can be computed using the phonon properties calculated by DFT. Specifically, one can use the Boltzmann transport equation in the relaxation time approximation to calculate the lattice contribution to the thermal conductivity. 3. Thermodynamic properties. The total free energy of a system can be determined from DFT calculations, which is particularly relevant for reactions at finite temperatures. This total free energy can be separated into electronic, vibrational, phononic, and configurational parts. For thermal properties, we are mostly interested in the vibrational contribution, which can be computed using the phonon density of states obtained from DFT. 4. Anharmonic effects. Real materials at finite temperature also exhibit anharmonic effects, i.e., departures from a simple harmonic picture of atomic vibrations. Anharmonicity can have a significant effect on thermal expansion and heat capacity, particularly at high temperatures. These can be handled using perturbative approaches or through molecular dynamics simulations based on DFT. 5. Molecular Dynamics MD-DFT can be combined with MD simulations to study the dynamical properties of systems at finite temperatures. This approach allows for the calculation of thermal properties directly from the dynamical trajectories. Remember that DFT-based predictions should always be taken with a grain of caution. While DFT is a powerful tool, it does have its limitations and approximations. The actual accuracy will depend on the details of the system being studied, the specific implementation of DFT, and the approximations made in the calculation. It's always a good idea to validate DFT predictions with experimental measurements when possible. Let's now discuss the alternative case of classical molecular dynamics and its various applications in the computation of materials' thermal properties. Molecular dynamics, MD, is a computational method used to model the physical movements of atoms and molecules. The atoms and molecules are allowed to interact for a fixed period of time, giving a view of the dynamical evolution of the system. The method can be applied to calculate the variety of thermal properties of materials. Here is an overview of how it's done. 1. Heat capacity. Heat capacity can be calculated by computing the change in average kinetic energy with respect to temperature. In an MD simulation, you could calculate this by gradually increasing the temperature of the system and monitoring the change in kinetic energy. 2. Thermal conductivity. The thermal conductivity of a material can be calculated using the green kubo relations, which link the thermal conductivity to the time integral of the heat current autocorrelation function. Alternatively, the thermal conductivity can be computed via a non-equilibrium method, where a temperature gradient is applied to the system and the resulting heat flux is measured. 3. Thermal expansion. Thermal expansion coefficients can be computed from MD simulations by calculating the linear response of the system's size to changes in temperature. This involves running simulations at different temperatures and measuring the change in the size of the system. 4. Melting point. The melting point of a material can be determined from MD simulations by gradually increasing the temperature and monitoring the phase of the system. The temperature at which the system transitions from a solid to a liquid state is identified as the melting point. 5. Diffusion coefficients. The diffusion coefficient, which can contribute to thermal transport, can be calculated from the mean squared displacement of particles in the system. MD simulations provide a powerful tool for calculating thermal properties of materials because they capture the atomic level interactions and dynamics that underlie these properties. However, it's important to remember that these simulations rely on empirical potential models to describe atomic interactions. 
The quality and reliability of MD-derived thermal properties are therefore dependent on the accuracy of the potential model used. Moreover, while MD simulations can handle relatively large systems and longer timescales compared to quantum mechanical methods like DFD, they can still be computationally demanding for very large systems or for properties that require long simulation times to accurately compute. Therefore, MD results should ideally be validated with experimental data whenever possible. The thermal properties of materials are crucial in a wide variety of industrial applications, affecting both the performance and safety of numerous products and systems. Here are a few examples. 1. Electronics. Thermal conductivity is an important factor in electronics. Materials with high thermal conductivity are often used in heat sinks to help dissipate heat from electronic devices and keep them operating at safe temperatures. 2. Construction. The thermal properties of materials used in construction significantly affect the heating and cooling efficiency of buildings. For instance, materials with low thermal conductivity, good insulators, such as fiberglass, are used in walls, roofs, and windows to limit heat transfer, keeping buildings warm in the winter and cool in the summer. 3. Automotive and aerospace. The materials used in engines and airframes must be able to withstand high temperatures. Therefore, materials with high melting points and low coefficients of thermal expansion are commonly used in these industries. 4. Clothing. Thermal properties are also important in the clothing industry. For instance, materials with low thermal conductivity are used in winter clothing to retain body heat. On the other hand, materials with high thermal conductivity might be used in athletic wear to help dissipate heat and keep the body cool. 5. Cookware. Materials with high thermal conductivity, like copper and aluminum, are often used in cookware to ensure even heating. The specific heat capacity also plays a role as it influences how quickly the cookware heats up and cools down. 6. Power generation. In power plants, especially nuclear ones, materials need to withstand high temperatures and also allow for efficient heat transfer. The choice of materials used in these applications heavily relies on their thermal properties. 7. Refrigeration and vac. Materials with good thermal insulation properties are used in refrigeration systems and heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, VAC, systems to maintain and regulate temperature. Understanding the thermal properties of materials is therefore crucial for their appropriate selection and use in various industrial applications. It also drives the development of new materials with tailored properties to meet specific industrial needs. This brings us to the conclusion of our presentation. Many thanks for your attention, and we recommend once more to please give a try to our Materials Square online platform for executing atomistic materials and chemical computations directly on the cloud by visiting its website at www.materialsquare.com. Please do not hesitate to contact us by email, as shown here on this slide, in case you would like to obtain further information on the various R&D services and solutions that we provide at Virtual Lab. Many thanks again for your interest and your consideration.